Welcome to a model steam engine test plant part 11. Completing the dual tank assembly by drilling a countersunk hole in the base. Machining the stainless steel support column, fitting o-ring seals and painting the lower tank. What is this you are looking at? It's some masking tape around the outer part of the jaws of my smart and brown lathe chuck. I'll put this in as a top tip. I'm using the masking tape because unfortunately I forgot to drill the hole in the base before I painted it with etching primer. Really I suppose there are two top tips here, the first one being always try and finish the job before you paint it and the second one is put masking tape around the chuck jaws so you do not mark the paint. All I have to do now is spin the tank and drill a quarter of an inch hole in the bottom. It's well supported and all the force is from right to left, not across. The job starts as always with the centre drill. Then I enlarge the hole to quarter of an inch and this is what I'm going to use, a countersunk bolt. The countersink that I normally use is very old, I've had it for about 45 years. So I bought a new set a while back but these are terrible. I bought the set via Amazon and it wasn't expensive. I didn't buy the set based on the price anyway. I try and buy good quality equipment all of the time. I'm sure that these countersink bits will be fine on a piece of wood, but they're not so good on metal. I'm a little bit worried because I'm having to apply quite a lot of pressure to create the countersink, and as you can see it's raising a burr around the edge. In the end I went back to my trusty old countersink which did the job a lot better. The countersink is still not deep enough though, I'm going to approach this from a different direction in a short while. With a final look at the masking tape around the chuck jaws, I'm going to move on to the next section. I fitted one of the original countersink bits into my DeWalt drill. To use a technical term, I wobbled it about a bit. I deburred the hole on the inside of the tank using a twist drill. I'm rubbing down the etch primer using a piece of scotch Bright substitute, which is like scotch Bright but not as good. But it gives a great finish on the etching primer and keys it for the top coat. I blew all the dust and metal particles away using my airline. Now I'm going to make the central support column for the top tank. I'm using a piece of stainless steel for this job because it's strong and rust proof. I'm checking that this is stainless steel by using a magnet and yes it is because it's non-magnetic. I bought this box of stainless steel chucking pieces from a scrapyard many years ago. And over the years the quantity is definitely diminishing. In this clip I'm marking the length that I need it to be for the job. And the first thing I need to do is machine it to the correct height. The machining sequence of this piece of stainless steel is shown with a lot more detail in my video called A Model Engineering Comedy of Errors Part 4. You may find it interesting because I did choose to do this job the hard way. First of all I'm reducing the diameter of the piece of metal so I can use my very small parting tool fitted into the tool holder of my Boxford lathe. I turn the piece of stainless steel to a suitable diameter that can then be parted off with a conventional high speed steel parting tool. In this parting tool sequence the lathe is running in back gear so it's going slowly. I'm using plenty of lubricant. This is a special cutting fluid that I use frequently. Here's a picture of the tin. It seems to work very well and as it says on the tin it's a penetrating cutting enhancer and cooling agent for hard metals. This is a very heavily edited sequence. If you want to see the full length one as I've just shown on screen, please search for A Model Engineering Comedy of Errors Part 4. I centre drilled one end and went through with a twist drill, which was tapping size for M6. In this clip I'm doing exactly the same at the other end, having turned the piece of stainless steel around in the chuck. Then I carefully threaded the whole M6 by hand, I only used power to withdraw the tap. Some people would use the column just like this, but I'm not going to do that for a couple of reasons. I like the parts that I make for models to be in scale with each other. Here I'm drilling a hole in the bottom of the main water tank to take an M6 bolt. In this clip I'm showing how hideous the column looks in its unmachined state. 
In this clip I'm testing the depth of the countersink underneath by fitting the bolt and everything's good. I put the top tank on the wrong way around. This wasn't intentional, I just didn't think. This next sequence in the Boxford lathe was very difficult to do. I think I need to check the head bearings or at least the lubrication points. I started off the job using a round nose tool to make an impression on the work, but this made a horrible noise. So after a while I switched to a more sensible method, or at least a more sensible method in my home workshop. I wanted to make this support look like a column, so it's not just going to be a bobbin like this, it's going to be shaped so that it has a bit of style about it. I turned the part around in the chuck and duplicated the size at each end. Here I'm using a file to remove any sharp edges, followed by using some wet to dry sandpaper to get a smooth finish although the finish was quite good to start with. I made a tank very similar to this one in a previous video, and I used gaskets at either end of the column to make sure it didn't leak. But this time I'm going to be more scientific. With a 5 16 of an inch diameter milling cutter in the tailstock chuck, I cut a recess in each end. This is a very simple job, but it's important to make sure the lathe is running slowly. I don't want any chatter marks in this, because I'm fitting silicone o-rings. The water in the tanks is at atmospheric pressure, so these should stop any leaks. Here you can see the finished column sat on the bench, and it looks a lot better than just a plain old lump of stainless steel. Here's a shot of the o-ring fitted to the long bolt that I'm going to use. Why am I using such a long bolt? Well, it's quite simple. In my stainless steel nuts and bolts drawer, I did not have an M6 bolt that was short. Even though I haven't shown it, I put the column back in the chuck and drilled part way down with a clearance size drill for M6. And although this was not the real reason for using it, the O-ring seats much better on a plain shank. That's the upper water tank ready to fit to the column, and here it is fitted to the column. It makes a really nice noise and sounds like a bell. And when I wave it about, it sounds like this, which is known as the Doppler effect. You can get too much of a good thing, so it's into the outer part of the workshop to show you this can of paint. This is my paint of choice for miniature steam locomotives and steam engines. Let the painting begin. I'm spraying the part, as you can see here, using a succession of thin coats, not one massive thick coat that would run. Although I do notice the reflection of the Lazy Susan turntable makes it look like it's running, but it's not. This sequence is running at a high speed, and eventually I get there. It's nicely covered, without any runs or sags. And to finish the video, as I always do, here's a shot of the paint drying. This paint will dry satin and almost matte, and it's perfect for the job. And that concludes this episode. I'd just like to say, as I always do, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.